Hey, 376. So I wanted to elaborate a little more on our vertical jump challenge. There were quite a few people that said, rightfully so, as we expect, their counter movement jump was larger than their static jump. Now remember, the idea is when you do a static jump, you're holding a down position in a squat for 10 seconds to eliminate the stretch reflex and to eliminate any stored elastic energy. So the idea is the static jump is simply your muscle mass using the muscle that you have to generate the force to propel your body up into the air. So if you didn't time that 10 seconds and you just went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right, that was not, likely not enough time and you don't want to repeat the test. Now, if in scenario one, the counter movement is bigger than the static, that should make sense for most people because you're using elastic energy and not cheating, but that's why counter movement jumps are more explosive because you use elastic energy and you're using the stretch reflex, right? Um, so that should make sense. But many people said that because their counter movement jump was bigger than their static jump, they needed to train more explosively. And that's... Eh, it depends, okay? And we'll come back to that because I think number two uh, explains it. So let me skip to three. In number three, I don't know if anyone had this. I don't recall. But if the static is bigger than the counter movement, then yeah, we have zero ability to use stored elastic energy and the stretch reflex. Or it could just simply be, well... We need to think about this one, and we need to talk to our two classmates who fell into this, because it could be related to just not doing any explosive training or not familiar with the counter-movement technique. Yeah. What is their muscle mass? What is their relative strength? Are they so strong because they're weightlifting and not doing any explosive movement training? Um, or if we go back to, to condition one, how explosive are they? How big is their vertical jump score compared to their static? You know, I mean, is it 10 inch vertical, 20 inch vertical? Is it 30 inch vertical, right? Most collegiate football and um, basketball players on the men's side will have 30 ish inch verticals, okay? Um, women closer to 20 to 25. Five. Okay. Um, if you look in the NSCA textbook, they have a whole host of mainly soccer players by age group, and they're in the 10 to 20 inch vertical jump range. Okay. Um, on the combine, there's in the NFL generally there's a 10 or so people will jump over 40 inch verticals. Um, you know, so just to, so you start getting a perspective of what that score means. Now, more interestingly, for number two, because there were a couple people that had identical static and uh, counter movement jumps. So now, if they're identical, you got to look at your relative strength. It's the same thing you're going to do in situation one or three. What's your relative strength? What's the one rep max in your squat divided by your body mass, right? If the ratio is less than one, right? then you likely need more strength as well as power training. But if you're really strong, and I just I just picked 1.5, so this would be a scenario where someone can squat one and a half times or more their body mass, then it's likely they need to train explosively and that they have sufficient strength but have not been doing any explosive training. So I hope this adds a little more to how you think about what you need. So, you know, if I were to do this again, what was your counter movement jump and how do you rank it? You know, just ballpark. Um, for women, if it's under 20 or under 15 inch vertical, there's plenty of room for improvement. For men, you know, at the college age, again, if it's less than 20, less than 25, there's plenty of room for more explosive training. But you want to also look at your relative strength. And obviously, full disclosure, I said 1RM squat divided by body weight. Don't go do a 1 rep max back squat right now just so you can figure this out, right? Indirect estimates of 1RM, um, you know, safe training, 
but look at your relative strength, okay? And then sort of start thinking, okay, do I need to be more explosive? Do I need to increase strength or do I need to increase muscle mass, right? Or do I need some combination? So I hope this gives you more insight on how to think about what your results mean. And this question will come back and I'll want a better explanation from you um, in the future. Okay, thanks.